So Doomsday Disc hit me up with a box a couple of weeks ago and while there were some meme discs in the box, <laughs> what? They also had some gems. I fell in love with the Despair, which is a very straight flying mid-range. Not a lot of dome to it, just kind of very comfortable in the hand. Nice little hyzer, you can get some flip to turn. And then the disc I think I love the absolute most was their Area 51, the overstable approach slash putter. Very thin profile, so it feels nasty for both forehands and the backhands. These were by far the two favorite discs that I pulled out of the box. So we're gonna put it to the test and compare it to the discs in my bag. To go against the Area 51, I have of course my A2 and then the straight flying mid. I was gonna use my Origin, but I just lost it the other day. So we're gonna settle with the Horizon MD1, doing the point system today. Three points for a park job, two points for C1, and one point for C2, starting on hole one, 220 feet. Ooh, I almost brought those trees into play. This is probably gonna be C C1's edge. They do have a pretty similar flight. Ooh. The A2 is more overstable. And low key, you can get some sneaky distance out of the Area 51. Doomsday starts the day with the early lead. About a 20 footer, so that's two points. My A2 took kind of a fat skip outside to C2, so Doomsday with the early lead. So while Doomsday does have some gems, they also have those meme discs that I was talking about. And I'm curious if you guys think that that hurts a brand. Like if you're known to have some like goofy discs, does that help you sell or does that kind of hurt? I, I really don't know. I think if you've got some really good discs to back it up, because you don't want to be, you don't want to be, hmm, you don't want to be known for having meme discs. But if the meme disc can get your attention, like they got my attention, and then you have some nice discs in there as well, I think that can help. But if you got some like mediocre discs, and on top of that, you got some like apocalypse-like discs, that is not good. All right, anyways, hole two, 360 feet. I think we're gonna alternate. So we had Doomsday go first on hole one, so even holes, we're gonna go with my bag. MD1 flat, playing the nice turnover shot through the jungle. Hold that turn. Be nice. That's C1. If it hit the tree, I probably would've been screwed. Now for the Despair, I think this one's gonna have a little bit more flip to that MD1. Does it get past the tree? Oh, freaking barely. Yo, that might actually be parked. MD1 right at that 20 foot range. Thankfully, putts don't matter. Thought the Despair was parked, it's not. It's only a 15 footer. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little fun fact. Right behind you is the track to the middle school and I was shooting a video out here the other day and some kids ran by and they're like, stop recording us, you creep. I was not recording them. It was literally facing this way. But it was so awkward because it was like, and they threatened, they're like, we're gonna tell our principal. And I was like, I wasn't gonna argue with them. I didn't say anything, but like, that is such a harsh thing to get accused of. In my head, I was like, man, is my life really about to get ruined over a damn YouTube video? Okay, 280 feet, Doomsday still winning. Okay, I'm glad I'm throwing some good shots with it, but I can't have it beat my bag. Back to the odd hole, so area 51 up first. Gonna throw a little forehand on this little 280 foot shot. Dude, that is... That thing is so disgusting. I'm hands down my favorite Doomsday disc. No cap. Now for the A2. Hopefully he doesn't get showed up. Does get around that tree though. <sighs> Yikes. I'm not gonna lie, the Area 51's nice. An absolute park job with the Area 51. So that's three points. My A2 hit the tree, still managed to get inside the circle, so. Still down two points. Let me tell you about this Area 51. First of all, it's absolutely beautiful. It's like this icy blue color. Again, I briefly mentioned it's a very thin profile. It's not too overstable, but it's not too understable. Like you saw in that shot, I just threw it on a little bit of hyzer. It was flipping up, but kind of one of those like forward pushing hyzers. And I can throw some forehands with it, but what I really like is the backhand. I feel like it's very torque resistant. You can really get down on this thing. And it has some distance, but also over stability. Like I said, the second I threw this thing, I loved it. But not as much as my A2 though. So don't get it twisted. This thing will always be my baby. There's really nothing I could do to make me stop throwing the A2. Uh, hole four, 250 feet straight shot. We did a flex line, we did a forehand. Now we're just gonna do a nice little hyzer shot. Going out wide in between the two trees and then having the disc hyzer back to the basket. Just like that. Some thick grass today, so not much skip. It's just gonna kind of hit and stick. Here's our area 51, same exact shot. Oh, wow, that got lucky. That got, I thought I was gonna hit the branch for sure. It squeaked through the, it's, it's a lot thinner than the A2. So if you've thrown the A2, the Area 51, it feels like a zone. I mean, that's exactly what it feels like. It feels like a zone. Let me be clear, it feels the same in thickness. It also kind of flies the same. This is basically like a zone. This one was 15 feet away, and my A2 was like one step back. Both were inside C1. 
So that's, uh, I'm still down by two points. Area 51 is out here beating my cheeks. Now we have hole five, 265 feet. There's gonna be some point separation here because the basket's just behind that tree and I'm taking the backhand turnover shot with the mid ranges. So very tight gap to hit, especially with everything growing now. Odd number, despair. I think, right? Anyways, here we go. Despair out wide, putting on a nice little ante, seeing if we can get it to flex back through the trees. It's gonna be tight. C2. I'm telling you, it's it's like 10 feet wide. It's a, it's a tough gap. Door is open though. I do have a chance to tie it up or at least get one point back. It's gonna fight out though. I hit the gap, but... Oh, good roll. Oh, that's gonna be close to this. Still probably circle two. Sheesh. Despair is definitely in circle two. It caught these branches. Meanwhile, the MD1 barely made it in C1. So score is getting a little closer. I'm only down by one. All right, four holes left on the hole six, 340 feet. And we do have some OB involved. Either disc could go out of bounds. Probably more likely the despair simply because there is a little bit of flip out of it. 340 feet, I'm gonna have to put some power on it. So I'm gonna play the hyzer flip and hopefully it will finish and not hold that turn too much. It's so dumb. I knew it was gonna flip. I didn't put enough hyzer on it. That's kind of dirty. I feel like I did doomsday bad, but oh well. Horizon MD1, take advantage of the open door. Well, we sure did. Could I go in? Oh my gosh. You can definitely see the difference in flight. Ah, oh, I feel bad. Doomsday definitely got jacked on that one, but rules are rules. MD1's inside C1. That's two points, which officially puts us on the leaderboard. Well, I guess we've always been on the leaderboard. It puts us in the lead. 300 feet elevated basket, same disc, except MD1 gets to go first. There is OB right, so again, I do not want to have this despair turnover, but MD1 almost right at that light pole, kind of high and flat, and then have it finish back to the left at the light pole. That was such a bad shot. Okay. C2, guaranteed a point. Despair, gotta put it on enough hyzer this time. Do not bring that OB into play. Okay, I... Th I'm sorry. I know what it looks like, but I swear I'm not trying to throw the game, okay? This is just more flippy than I thought. It wasn't that flippy on a hole two. And I put it on some hyzer this time. And to make matters even worse, never mind. No, it's just outside C1, so it's only gaining one point on Doomsday. Yikes. 230 down a tunnel will bust out the approach discs again on a odd hole, so area 51. Oh, this is, this is gonna be nice and crispy. I already know it. Ah. Oh. I tried to give it a nice little healthy run. It's inside C2. The A2, I'm gonna have to do a little flex. It's not gonna be able to go as straight as the Area 51. Off the tree. That might be GG's. I think it's in C1. It is barely inside C1. So that's two points. Two points from my A2, because it's at the base of that tree. It's at like 15 feet. Oh, okay. I mean, it, it's gonna come down to the last hole. I definitely choke with that despair though. It was three times in a row where my bag just bodied them, but. I didn't throw any good shots, that's kind of the problem. Now if I threw a good shot every time, then I wouldn't be that upset about it, but OB OB is just a little embarrassing. Final hole, 270 feet, going forehand. Uh, odd hole, so area 51. I mean, we gotta park it or try to skip it in. So sending this thing low and on a lot of hyzer and just kind of see what happens. Oh, it's in the circle. GG's doomsday. Ain't nobody beating my bag. That might be C2. Not C1. Ain't nobody beating my bag. Ended the day with both discs being inside C1. If you haven't checked out Doomsday Discs, be sure to try it out. I highly recommend the Area 51 and the Apocalypse. Very flippy. Peace. Peace.